decided that she was going to do this. So she folded paper cranes, and with each crane, she wished that she would recover from her illness. She managed to fold 644 cranes before she lost her life. Her classmates folded the remaining 356 cranes so that she could be buried with a thousand cranes. Friends collected money from children all over Japan to erect a monument to her at Hiroshima's Peace Park. And the inscription on the plaque reads this, This is our cry, this is our prayer, peace on earth. Each year, people uh, from around the area come back and they place paper cranes at the base of the statue and recall the tragedy of war and celebrate humanity's undying hope for peace. In some places around the world, peaceful, uh, people fold paper cranes each holiday season to use as decorations and as a symbol of their desire for lasting peace. In May 2016, our two countries took steps towards reconciliation and peace when President Obama went to Japan to offer sympathy to the Japanese people for what had occurred at the end of the war, for the suffering of the atomic bombs, had caused them, and then he apologized for a U.S. Marine that had, had murdered a Japanese woman earlier that year, and affirmed that the U.S. would comply with all investigations into that murder. The steps that these two countries took is what peace can look like if we desire it most, and what we should strive for together. Remember what I reminded you of, all of us, of, at the beginning of this season of Advent. Advent is a vital time for our faith because we are being called to move towards a Christ child, to our Lord and Savior, and prepare for His arrival, His coming. Advent is about being vigilant, about us being vigilant, and eagerly anticipating the arrival of the Son of God. We know the story of Christ from his birth to his eventual death that we will remember at Easter. We would say that we are saved by Christ because he went to the cross. But we don't say what that salvation means for us now. Advent reminds us that the chains are broken. That those things that hold us down in this world do not mean anything. There will be Christmas. In the darkest days, even though now we're technically moving away from the darkest day of the year, but in the darkest days, we will one day know light. Candle by candle, flame by flame, there is hope. Hope that we can find what God has in store for us. That's what these candles remind us of. And tonight, we will light that Christ candle in remembrance of this promise that God gave to us to come and be with us. Today we find that God has peace for us. God doesn't desire that we would be living in hate for one another or desiring to harm one another. Our God desires for us to live in peace and tranquility with each other. That was the purpose of the garden, and that's the purpose of God's coming kingdom, which we believe is already present yet not fully realized. There is war and violence and hatred, all of which overshadows the love that is in this world too. And how this love will ultimately overcome the cruelty of our world. Advent is the season of renewal and preparation for the believer, for us to find where we can grow and develop in our own faith and seek to be more Christ-like. Think about this. The Christ child and his parents were refugees that were fleeing the oppression and certain death in order to find peace. They ran when Herod ordered that all children that were born be killed. And so they fled as refugees to Egypt to seek safety and shelter. <coughs> Jesus, as we know, does survive but this King Herod is the one that people resented. They had been oppressed by the Roman government, 
and have desired for God to deliver them, as God has done so often before, but Jesus ultimately was a different Messiah than they had hoped for and imagined. Jesus was the Messiah that instead of living up to the expectations of destroying the government, Jesus chose to live for peace. Jesus was not going to cause more harm in order for peace to be achieved, and this is what it means to have the peace of God. To recognize that the peace of God is not about having freedom from suffering, but the ability to endure the suffering that we receive. Friends, we have come to the end of our Advent season. We are now only a few hours from Christ's coming, or rather from Christmas Day. We have engaged with the Word of God for a whole year, and are about to begin a new one. So what have we gained from our engagement of God's Word this year? How have we grown in the spirit and in our understanding of God's grace? And what are we going to do with that next year? Jesus is almost here, but are we ready? And so I'm going to repeat to you the few questions I asked you at the beginning of that. What are we waiting for? Who are we waiting for? And so in the middle of this darkest time in the year, as we turn towards a star, and we watch it grow brighter and closer to us, and we strive in some small way to reflect the light that Christ has brought into this world, how are we going to be different next year? And that's what Advent is. This is what Advent is. That time for us to prepare, to renew, to reflect. The time is here and now for Christ's arrival. And it's up to us to respond to what Christ has for us. This day and in the year ahead. Merry Christmas and amen. I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward at this time as we uh, share in our offering. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy Lord, we give you thanks once again for this day. We give you thanks that we can provide these offerings and gifts to you. We ask that you.
you would use them for your glory and your glory alone. That you would help us to be good stewards of them, Lord. But you'd also give us opportunities to be a living sacrifice for you this week, too. That we can share your love this, this week between Christmas and New Year's with those who we encounter and those who we may not know. Lord God, we give you thanks for the blessing of family and the blessing of our church family. And we ask that you give us all that we need and the strength that we need this week to be your hands and feet in the world. Friends, if you would go forth this day with the love of Jesus Christ in your hearts, knowing that that peace which surpasses all understanding is with you, is in your hearts, in yourselves, and that you can share it with others.